was just in some deep thought. I think the next project I do is going to be one I have talked about a few months ago. This is what I call the stick. This is solidly put together. It's got a few different parts, but it's no moving parts. You got the steel tube that sits over the top of the, the mast. Uh, there'll be screws in it to attach it to the mast. You got a, this is an aluminum section here. This aluminum section that fits tightly in the top of this tube has a stainless steel shaft that goes up. I'm not sure how long it's going to be, uh, but it's got to be tall enough for the for the tube for the the vault to slide over. Uh, inside this, you get the the stainless steel, and then there's a, a nut on the bottom. This this is going to be turned down. See, like right in here somewhere. This is going to be turned down to five eighths inch diameter, and then when I tighten up the lock nut that's down here, it'll it'll hold it down inside this socket basically what it is. Now the socket doesn't just hold the stainless steel shaft. Uh, the so the, this also holds a magnet. And this magnet is going to oppose this magnet. And when this is slid down over the top of the shaft you have a bearing right here and you have a tapered bearing up here. This, the tapered bearing is so you can tighten it and draw it down. And this is a 4 inch pulley. So when this comes over and it sits on this, you've got the, the magnet right above. You've got one magnet right above the other and they oppose each other and it forces the tube up. And that space between there, that is a thrust bearing. Or that's my version of a magnetic thrust bearing. It's not my version. I'm sure it's been around for a while. Uh, I was playing with stuff like this when I was just a little bitty kid. And I imagine there's been an awful lot of people do that too. So this is not a new thing. I just want to put it into use on this product. Working on the stick and this is going to be the pulley and the fun part is cutting it along this line and I get to use this to do it. Uh, how long do you think it'll take? Four or five hours maybe? <laughs> I'm not looking forward to this at all. next machine I buy for this shop is going to be a metal bandsaw. No doubt.
just cut off a few minutes ago. Now, I've got to make a recess uh, for the, the maggot and I've got to put a, a hole through it for the shaft. I have to cut up the other end with a, for a bearing. Lots of work. I'll show you later. These magnets Right now they sell for about $36 a piece. So this may be the only one I make right now uh, until I get a little more money. It's a stainless steel shaft. You got the two of these uh, round magnets and they repel each other. So this magnetic thrust bearing or an invisible bearing, but uh, This is a piece that I made. This is, uh, the bearing will go on this. This has teeth in it that uh, match a mini, a mini V belt. It's a very tight fit. And that mini v, v belt also matches this uh, pulley that I made for the front of a generator or PMA. This will fit the Freedom 2. This will fit the original Freedom. This will fit the Wind Blue and any other uh, alternator type uh, PMA that uses 17 millimeter shaft. So this might even work for the people that always give me thumb down on my videos because I talk about the Freedom 2 and the Freedom BMG. So, this should make everybody happy. Should. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of assembly. Uh, this is one of my center tubes. This is actually a mistake. I made a boo boo, but I've uh, found a way to use it. So, I've got these 
I drill these out together and then I take them apart. But before I take them apart, I mark that a little bit. And then I tap that hole, ream that out, and then I can put them back together again where they match up perfectly. So this is getting these little button screws. Whoop, 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 whoop. Almost screwed up. You were going to let me screw up, weren't you? Alright, this, the inside of this piece, that's kind of pretty, isn't it? Lots of hours on that. My, my lathes can't hog off material, so I take off a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. This gets a, uh, a regular bearing, bearing. This will keep it centered on the uh, stainless steel shaft. And that goes right in that hole right there. Just put a few little dings around there to help lock that in place. I don't want it uh, moving around. It shouldn't move around too much since it's uh, going on this way and the weight of it is going to keep it inside there but it never hurts to be a little bit have a little bit of insurance on that so of course it changed the fit here too a little bit that's okay My finger wasn't between that. Let's see. Hmm. Okay, so that's together. That's what that looks like. So now, take off the magnet. I have to take off the generator just to make that easier. I don't intend on taking this apart again. Things change, but. Since I don't intend on taking it apart again, I want to clean that shaft off a little bit. It shows you how the magnets repel each other right there. So, to solve that problem, there's a, a, a ring mounted inside the end of the tube here. And that collar there is supposed to be held in by set screws, but I don't have the set screws yet. The tube itself has a shoulder on it so that collar is pinned against that shoulder so it shouldn't go anywhere and then with that shoulder the shoulder holds a tapered bearing so you have a, a race for the table tapered bearing that sits against the, the collar I just showed you and then the tapered bearing sits inside that race so you can put pressure down this way and and it will force this down so that's the next step I gotta put a little grease on that since I don't intend on taking this apart again and uh, so we'll go find some grease now on the, on the top of this on the very end there's a berry <laughs> all right the very end of this, I have threads. Those are a three-quarter fine thread. Um, and I've got uh, a pair of nuts. So the idea... Um, 
I've had to pull that down to be able to, to run that nut down. So, I've got two jam nuts. Uh, so the idea, you put the, the two there, then you lock them together, and that isn't going to move. I do plan to, I do plan to machine uh, an aluminum nut that does the same thing as that second jam nut. And it will be, uh, it'll stick up a little bit and be, be rounded or maybe not necessarily rounded, but it's going to be watertight. It won't have a hole in it. And it should come down where it almost touches the top of this tube. So water hopefully will run past the bearing instead of going into it. But, but for now, since this is proof of concept, this is not a prototype. I'm just using the jam nuts to jam against each other. So, so you can see how close that is to each other, and that that is pretty hard to push down. So, I'm putting on uh, probably half of my weight onto that to push it down. So I'm sure that that's probably fine for a 22 pound generator or a wind turbine and uh, it spins real nice over the top of that so there's no friction here whatsoever. You do have friction in the bearing here and the bearing on the top but that's really not very much at all. So I may go ahead and uh, put one of the generators on here. I haven't, uh, you know, this, this space right here is for the Freedom 2. So you can go as big as a Freedom 2. And then to go smaller than that, you have to add a spacer. So this spacer is for the Freedom PMG. The reason I don't like using these in a Vought is because it just has the two mounting points. And if your wind is really strong blowing against the top, then, I mean, it's possible to break aluminum. I've done it on other things, but, uh, I mean, it probably would hold up pretty good, but I just, I just prefer four points. But in this particular configuration, this is a lot like the way it is set up in your car. It's an automotive, an automotive setup here, so... Pull that out. We got our piece. I want it to be nice and snug. And didn't need all that, but I just put it on there anyway. Now this is, I've got to weld a, another tab over here and on the tab it'll have a hole about right here and then it'll have a piece of a flat that comes out here with a little slot in it so that makes this adjustable. I haven't got around to that yet. But it's, it's in the process. Some things take time. change the pulley. I've got the, this is the only, only pulley I've made so far that fits the 17 millimeter shaft. Forget what I'm doing sometimes. Half getting old. Here's a, a closer, closer to look at that pulley. It's deep enough where a nut 
and lock washer can fit down inside of it and it uh, I want to make sure there's enough enough of the nut attached to the shaft to hold it in place it might not be a bad idea in the future to put a key in here but not all of the shafts not all 17 millimeter shafts have a key in them so it hadn't so far it hadn't been necessary and this is like I said this is a proof of concept this isn't the actual item and if, if I ever do start uh, producing these things I'm going to have to have some more tools uh, to make make these things right here with a pair of them I have to cut that with a grinder or a plasma cutter and the, I've had my eyes on a uh, a plasma cutter and it also is a TIG welder so TIG welding would be great too because I've got a I've got a $135 Chicago brand uh, welder, wire welder from Harbor Freight. It just doesn't, it just doesn't have the oomph to do the job very well. So I would really like to have a good welder. I would like to have a metal cutter. I would like to have a horizontal bandsaw. And before I can go in production on these things, I've got to have those tools. I don't expect anybody to take care of that for me, but don't expect them to happen anytime soon because it, it's just going to take forever to do it. Every, you know, if I have to do it this way every time. locked in place now so it looks like this Let's see which size Little belt works something like that I'm lay that back down Ooh. you know when you put a generator on there it starts getting really heavy Tummy tightening technique again. Uh. All right, here we go. Now that's better. When you turn the turn this, that shaft turns as well. It's really not not all that hard to turn. really does need that extra brace in it. What am I doing? What am I doing now? It really does need that other piece to keep that belt tight. But that's the idea. So the next thing to do is to find out if I have this mounted and have a turbine on it, are the blades going to be, is this going to interfere with the blades? Here's the bottom side of this uh, contraption. Um, I've got, this is a locking nut, it's got a, a collar in there that pins it to this, this shaft. Now, 
This has been sized down to 5 8 inches, 5 8 inch diameter here. And there's a little collar inside this big old chunk of aluminum. And uh, so this spins just like that. So that's the center shaft that, that spins inside that outer shaft, or actually the outer shaft spins over the inner shaft. But anyway, uh, this is what I'm doing now. So I've got these little arms on this uh, tube. And to make the, the other arm that's adjustable, I've cut a piece of, uh, of steel for that that I'll be mounting somewhere over here. This is where a plasma torch would come in real handy. First, I'd draw it out. I don't know. Might be able to see that tracing. I try I trace out where I want to cut, and then I cut out a, a piece around. Let's show her here. See how that was. Something like that. I cut out a, a chunk around what I'm what I'm trying to keep, and then I have to clean it up with a grinder, and that just takes forever. That's why I probably won't do a production production product of this until I have a plasma cutter. Now I bought a metal cutting bandsaw blade and uh, put it on my uh, on my Craftsman bandsaw here, and I cut about six inches, and then it became too dull to cut anymore. So that was, it might still work on aluminum, but it doesn't work on steel. So that was a $18 waste of money. Because uh, the wood, wood cutting band, uh, bandsaw blade actually worked on aluminum. So I didn't need to spend the extra money on one for metal if it wouldn't cut this. So plasma is best bet on that. And then, uh, you know, after I cut it out, I clean it up with a grinder CNC would be awesome but I don't don't have the space for it even if I had the money so but anyway I've got to uh, weld this on and then uh, then I can put this back together I'm getting Peter's turbine ready to ship uh, but I think I want to borrow that for just a minute and try uh, see how it works with the uh, with the stick and as you can tell right now I have the freedom 2 or the big old pumpkin generator on there um, I ought to clean that up before I record it huh? this this one's been sitting out in the weather for uh, about uh, four or five years almost four years at least it's been up on my roof uh, of the garage but since the uh, turbine got bashed up I went ahead and brought the whole thing down so and that's good because I get to try uh, try it with uh, a turbine and I'm gonna borrow borrow Peters for just a few minutes to try that with so uh, if you if you're talking to Peter, don't tell him, you know, because if it doesn't if he doesn't know, he, it won't bother him any. But uh, anyway, we'll see what it looks like on that, and we'll put it, pitch it up in the air and see what. Well, here is the Freedom Two on the stick, all set up. I wouldn't even attempt, you know. I really don't think uh, the Freedom 2 is a good idea for this particular application because I'm not sure if the turbine has enough torque to really spin it. Uh, although the longer blades of this will help, but we're having the highest 
mile per hour wind we've had today all day long is uh, seven miles per hour. So I'm gonna look at my wind gauge and see what it's doing right now while I'm I'm hoping to see that spin, but so three miles per hour, 93 degrees, highest wind speed was seven miles per hour. And it's uh, 12.43 in the afternoon, so it's just, just now afternoon. But anyway, it looks nice, <laughs> even though I can't tell if it's going to do anything or not. I'm just going to have to build another turbine. Uh, and I actually have an idea for something, uh, actually two different ideas. Uh, for something a little bit different and uh, those will be in videos in the future okay we'll recap this is a 48 96 volt freedom 2 on the stick a little easier to turn this is a 48 volt Freedom PMG on the stick. This represents any automotive style alternator body converted to a PMA. This is a wind, a low wind, wind blue brand PMA on the stick. Well, this one might be the next project. Uh, I want to mount this leveling jack onto the, the, the post. That's the, the mast. And whenever it goes up, you know, that, you turn the crank and this raises the mast up and it locks it in place. So since it locks in place, I've got to change the uh, pivot point. I can move it on further down, probably closer to where the where that one is over there and that'll add a couple feet in height uh, I'm not sure which side I want this to be on uh, because eventually I'm going to have solar panels on here too so whenever I I lower it down it lays the solar panels down in a storm position or raise it back up and then it gets it back into usable position so that's something I've got to think about now I've been working on uh, on some center rings. Uh, I've still got a lot of work to do to that, but uh, it's a long, tedious process, and I really didn't think you wanted to see this, so I didn't record it. But uh, but I have been working on this. Um, I've still got a few things I few options I have to do on this which will be future videos I still have to uh, to make a nut to replace this top nut here that will uh, cover the whole top of this and keep the rain out of that bearing uh, so that's a coming up pretty soon I've got uh, I've got a drill bit on order for that so I have to be able to drill into the cap and then tap it so it can screw onto that no openings for rain to get in and I have a couple possibilities for things and I've already ordered I've got a little digital RPM gauge and this is a sensor and I have to mount you know, that little magnet right here somewhere around this area so uh, this sensor will be able to count the rotations I may have to build a or make a, a lip that sticks out underneath the pulley that um, will hold the magnet because the this this big magnet is right there so if I was to drill a hole right here and set this little magnet in it the magnet right here might interfere with the uh, ability for that sensor to, to trigger 
So I'm, I might try and drill a hole in here just to see if that would work. And if it does, I could mount, mount this and drill a hole in that plate and just attach it to it. But uh, that's something I'll be playing with. And there's another idea. Since I've, when I originally thought about this, I was also thinking about making my own generator. Now, I've had a lot of people tell me to do the actual ax, axial flux type generators. And I, I really don't, I don't like the idea of messing with resin and all the space that it takes up. Um, and the idea that actual flux is usually very large. And uh, I like the generator to be small. Um, and that's part of the reason why I like the uh, alternator type or the or the Freedom and Freedom 2. It's real small. It's real tight. But I've got an idea where I'm using motorcycle stators. All right. And that is a, I forgot what it's uh, supposed to fit. But I've got two of them. So... Does that look like a dual core uh, PMA to you? The th thing about this is I've got all this all this space between between these two mounting points, and that's where I would mount the generator if I built one, where I can run it off of a belt as well. So the the idea is maybe I could do two or three or four cores in that one little space but it kind of depends on how I've got to put it together because each one of these will have to have some kind of a plate between it to keep it uh, separated and straight I have to have a place for the wires to travel because they can't stick out the side because the uh, there'll be there'll be a tube that goes around them that has all the magnets mounted to it so the the magnets will be rotating around it like this. So all the wires have to be inside. So all this is things I have to think about. Since I have so many things to think about, I'm gonna stop this video right here. If you have a preference on which project you'd like to see next, let me know in the comment section below. And in the meantime, I'm going to have to study on this a little bit and uh, figure out how to make everything work uh, all goes together. I know why it's lacking power. It needs a better intake for that blower there. <laughs>